Thank you all for coming. Here is the class worksheet for today. I'm going to start out by quoting a famous microbiologist, Louis Pasteur, who once said, let me tell you the secret that has led me to my goal. My strength lies solely in my tenacity. I want you to think about that as a student. What do you think Louis Pasteur means when he says, my strength lies solely in my tenacity? Faith, what do you think? Determination. Yeah, be determined. Jake, what do you think? What, is that, what does that sound like to you? Relentless, doesn't give up. He, he's relentless, right. He doesn't give up, okay? So as a student, you should be that way too, right? You should be determined. You shouldn't, you should be relentless. So be like Louis, be tenacious. Okay. Today we're gonna to talk about G protein linked receptors, AKA G protein coupled receptors. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain the role of G protein linked receptors in cell signaling. You should be able to describe how at least one specific G protein linked receptor works and you should be able to explain the clinical significance of G-protein linked receptors. Let's start with some humor. What do you find in an empty nose? Hmm. What? Fingerprints. <laughs> but, this applies to my next question. What makes it possible for you to smell? What makes it possible for you to smell? What do you think? Chemoreceptors. Ah, chemoreceptors, right. So receptors. I'll put, I'll put, I'll put receptor up there. It turns out that we have receptors, these olfactory receptors, in the cells in our nose, right? That allow us to distinguish more than 10,000 different smells. Okay? So these olfactory receptor neurons have these modified cilia. So these are on our nose. Looks like the, kind of these hair-like projections. And these receptors are embedded in these modified cilia. And when they are signaled, allow that uh, signal to be transduced, ultimately reaching our brain. Okay, so when you inhale through your nose, small odorant molecules or ligands in the air interact with these olfactory receptors which transmits a signal to your brain. So ultimately that signal is going to be perceived in your brain as a smell. Okay? But how do these receptors work anyway? Well, it turns out that they are a type of receptor called a G-protein coupled receptor, or a GPCR, which are displayed, as I mentioned, on the surface of these modified cilia uh, that extend from each cell. Okay? So GPCRs are the largest family of cell surface receptors. And as you can see in the picture here, GPCRs are embedded in the plasma membrane. We have a plasma membrane here. This is the outside of the cell. This is the inside of the cell. And then uh, there could be a GPCR. So it's gonna have a binding site for a ligand on the outside of the cell. It's gonna be embedded in the plasma membrane, GPCR. Okay. And inside the cell, the GPCR is going to be associated with the G protein. And it turns out the G proteins are linked, are tethered to the inside of the plasma membrane, so the inner surface of the plasma membrane. And when they are in their inactive state, they are bound to GDP. So these associated G proteins, when they are bound to GDP, are inactive. But when they are bound to GTP, it turns out that they are active. Um, quick question, Dr. Amy. Sure. Um, is it, are there any relations to ATP and GDP with an unequal tripod and nitron phase? That's exactly correct. That's a good question. So a GDP, is tethered, right, diphosphate, so you already said it, okay, it's not, it, it's composed of two phosphate groups, so it's a diphosphate, whereas uh, GTP, triphosphate, is 
contains three phosphate groups. Okay. Good question, Jake. Thank you. Okay. So in step one, okay, this is uh, when the G uh, protein coupled receptor is in its inactive state. It's not associated. Right. It's not bound with a ligand. So the, uh, the GPCR is inactive. So there's no ligand bound. And the G protein, phase of the G protein is inactive, it's bound to GDP or GTP? GDP, good, okay. So, here in step in, in uh, step two shown here, when a ligand binds, the receptor is activated, transmit that transmits that signal across the plasma membrane to the G protein, and then the G protein exchanges GDP for GTP, and then it's uh, in fact is active. Okay. So step two, we have uh, the GPCR is bound to the ligand which then activates the G protein. So, Jake, if the G protein is active, is it bound to GDP or GTP? Uh, GTP. GTP, good. And then the activated G protein can diffuse along the plasma membrane and activate a target protein. So the target protein is often an enzyme that generates a second messenger. So, we have the activated G protein will in turn uh, activate a target protein. Okay. And then the target protein might um, produce a second messenger and a common second messenger is cyclic AMP or CAMP. Okay. We'll talk about CAMP again in just a minute. But there has to be also a way to inactivate the G protein. It turns out that G protein has GTPase activity. So it, uh, what a G protein can do is hydrolyze uh, the GTP back to the GDP form. Okay? So when uh, the G protein hydrolyzes GTP back to GDP, is it active or inactive at that point, Jake? Right, it's inactive because it's now bound to GDP. So it's back to its inactive form, right? So on your worksheet, I want you to, uh, for memory, I want you to draw a GPCR that's bound to a ligand and the activated protein, uh, the activated G protein. Okay, those look really good. Those look really good. Do you have any questions so far? Okay, good. So the clinical significance of GPCRs include the fact that about half of all known drugs work through G-protein coupled receptors. And gene sequencing has revealed that there are still many potential new uh, drug targets um, that we still haven't taken advantage of yet that are GPCRs, okay? Secondly, cholera produces, so the, the Pathogen Vibrio cholerae produces a toxin known as cholera toxin. Cholera toxin will inhibit the GTPase activity of G proteins. So, Jake, if a G protein cannot hydrolyze GTP to GDP, what effect does that have on the G protein? It's all. It can't deactivate. Right, it can't deactivate. So that G protein is stuck in its active form. And in this case, that will lead to uh, fluid secretion severe dehydration and severe dehydration, which is potentially life-threatening. <laughs> so let's use Socrative for a concept check here. I want you to access Socrative with your electronic devices and answer the first question. What activates a GPCR? So go ahead and input your answer there. Yay. Excellent. Binding to the ligand, right? So that's the first messenger. That information is then going to be transmitted through the plasma membrane into the inside of the cell. Okay, one more question. 
When is a G protein active? Good. So when it is bound to GTP, right? When it is bound to GTP, the G protein is active. So let's take a moment and review. Faith, will you please do question or do the first question? Sure. Smell, smell receptors are G protein coupled receptors, which are the largest family of cell surface receptors. Good. Jake, number two. Now, can you explain the role of G-protein-linked receptors in cell signaling? Yes. Good. How about, can you describe how at least one specific G-protein-linked receptor works? Yes. yes. Good. And can you explain the clinical significance of G-protein-linked receptors? Yes. Good. Good job, everyone. Thank you very much.